During the pandemic, most office jobs have transitioned to a work from home model. In the initial phases, when people didn't know when they would get back to work, most people worked from home. As the pandemic went on, some people began to realize the opportunity afforded them. As long as they had a phone and internet access, they could really work from anywhere. This was heightened even further with many schools going full-time remote. Families can now take extended trips, visiting family and vacation spots. As long as they were online for work hours, they could really be anywhere in the world. To take this one step further, the success of the remote worker has started the dialogue of allowing people to work remotely. Those living in high cost markets have proven that they don't really need to be near the office to do the job. We're starting to see lots of stories of people moving out of markets, such as Silicon Valley, to much lower cost markets. What impact does this have to your workforce and compensation? In this video, we're gonna look at the impact of workers moving to other market areas. What they and their employers must contend with. Is it worth it or not? Let's take a look. Hey Streamliners, Greg here discussing the impact of remote work on pay and the changes employers will need to tackle. However, as more people become vaccinated and offices start opening up, companies will be forced to wrestle with the question of whether employees can work remote on a full-time basis going forward or if they need to come into the office. Now, if that becomes an option, the company will take on a new set of challenges. However, there are also some great benefits. So what are some of the issues that employers need to be ready to address? Well, first, Employers that have geographic pay structures will need to make a determination on how they will execute their pay program in the future. Facebook recently stated that they will adjust employee pay if those employees moved from the Bay Area to lower cost locations. So picture this, an employee living in San Francisco and an employee in Boise, Idaho work for the same company doing the same job. The company pays regional differentials so the person from San Francisco makes $130,000 and the person from Boise makes $100,000. Now the pandemic hits and schools start to go remote. So both families work the next 12 months at their family's house at Gold Beach, Oregon. Now, both people are next door neighbors doing the same job for the same company, but should that $30,000 difference in salaries remain? So for this example, it may be a little bit of a stretch, but you can see the dilemma that the company faces when employees that are remote can really be anywhere. How can the employer ensure that the remote employees are working regularly in that high cost market they purported to live in before going remote? And if the employer cuts pay for people staying long-term in a lower cost market, what is the chance that employees will self-report when they do in fact move to lower pay areas? Another concern for employers is whether or not the company is licensed to practice business in that particular state the person moves to. A multinational company may be licensed to operate in all 50 states, but what about the 2,000 person company that operates out of the Northeast? If your 60 year old employee heads down to the villages in Florida, but your organization doesn't have a tax identification number for Florida, that could be an issue. Is the company willing to file in Florida? Now this is a legitimate question that companies are now facing. What about licensing requirements? If you're licensed to practice your profession in Tennessee, but you're now staying at Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, can you legally perform your role? This is another question that businesses will have to understand. Other questions include, is the payroll department set up and ready to calculate and ensure that state taxes are properly being paid? Are there any differences in labor laws in the new state or market versus where you were working? For example, maybe minimum wage, break schedules, time off, leave, and maybe even vacation carryover requirements are different in the state you're working. What about states with laws requiring home office and administrative supply reimbursement? What about morale and team building? If employees do become 100% remote, will you miss an opportunity to conduct team building exercise and cultivate morale? Will remote managers be as apt to provide effective performance reviews? In a 2021 World at Work article by Brett Christie, he noted a survey stating that only 35% of managers have given a performance review in the past year. And if the manager is not trained in remotely assessing performance and providing a review, there may be quality issues in the review as well. There are so many things to think about before an employer commits to a full-time remote work model. So why would a company even consider it? Let's point out some of the major benefits. Cost savings, maybe. If you have a large pool of employees in high cost markets, but you can now hire people or transition people to lower cost markets, you may be able to lower the salary get paid each year. Now privilege is the new norm. I've had conversations with HR leaders and recruiters. They are saying that a large percentage of candidates are now wanting to know if the companies are offering hybrid or remote work plans. If the company doesn't offer something, candidates remove themselves from consideration. Well, I might see this as an exception. 
I never would have thought this approach by candidates would be such a common trend. If you do offer remote work models, your candidate pool will grow exponentially as the nation is really your playground. For example, if you were only looking for candidates near your office, or we're having to convince people to relocate to your office, now you can expand your candidate pool. Imagine that you need a programmer and you're in Charlotte, North Carolina area. While it's an up and coming, vibrant market, your pool may be limited to your region. With a remote worker structure, you can now hire employees from anywhere within the country. Now the flip side for employees is that they don't need to limit themselves to opportunities in their market. Now they can apply for jobs across the country. So what should your organization do? Well, you need to make a decision for yourself. However, Make sure you understand the challenges you will need to address. Do you have the right resources? If you're willing to do what you need to do, there are lots of advantages to be had. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And why not watch one of the videos that are showing right here on the screen.